What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. I built a couple of these wing desks in the past and now I finally got the opportunity to do another one and show you guys my process. We're gonna be covering metalworking, woodworking, we'll do some 3D printing and some CNC routing also. Oh yeah, and we have a ton of polishing to do, so make sure you stick around. I've built a couple of these in the past and I've always started with building the wing section. So let's start there. I'm using 50,000 thick 3003H14 sheet aluminum. Using a washer is a great way to trace a pattern and add an offset like I'm doing for this flange. I'll be making a total of five of these ribs. There's a lot of ways to cut aluminum. Pretty much anything that will cut wood will work fine. I rough cut my shapes with the jigsaw and then use the bandsaw to cut right on the line. I smooth these cuts out with a hand file. I sandwich the sheet between two pieces of oak and then go to work with a few different hammers. This is more of a feel thing for me. You could use just a ball peen if that's all you had. I just like using this opportunity to get some of my hammers out and put them to work. The idea is to keep moving and slowly bend the edge over. The sides will lay completely flat against the hammer form, but the metal around the radius will start to buckle. I use a punch to push this metal into these reliefs. I continue to work my way around until everything is flat against the hammer form. Next I enlarge all of the holes using a step bit and use this hydraulic knockout kit to punch the holes to the size I need. Each hole has a corresponding dimple die that I use to flare the hole. This adds strength and looks really nice in my opinion. The hydraulic knockout kit is from Harbor Freight and the dimple die set is from TMR Customs. I'll put links down in the description if you wanna check that stuff out. One thing I've always struggled with in the past was getting the skin to wrap around the ribs. I have an idea for a tool that will help me but I haven't had the time to make it and really don't have the room for it right now. Basically, it will be a sheet metal break that bends the metal around a curve instead of over a sharp edge. This time I used some PVC pipe that I had laying around to try to get some shape into the skin. It worked okay. I'm in the process of moving and will have a lot more room in my new shop. I'll definitely be building a tool to help with this in the near future. Next, I lay out the holes for the rivets. They make a tool for doing this and I really need to invest in one. For now, I just transfer the pattern to a scrap piece of wood and I can use that to make sure everything is the same. I drill these out with an eighth inch drill bit and use these Clecos to hold the metal together. These are basically a temporary rivet. They're really handy for doing this type of work. Now it's time to fire up the air compressor and make some real noise. I just use a regular air hammer and a modified chisel. I flatten the end of a punch and use a die grinder to make a dimple in the end that fits the head of a rivet. For now, I just use body dollies to back up the rivet. One day I might invest in the proper tools for this. Usually airplanes are built with flush rivets that fit into a tapered hole. This keeps them even with the surface of the wing. I just use these cheap solid rivets that I get on Amazon because wind resistance isn't really a consideration on this desk. Doing this alone isn't an easy task and I ended up slipping and putting a few dents in the front. Oh well, now it just looks like it's seen some damage from some aerial combat. A track saw works great for cutting strips of aluminum. I use the same techniques to turn this piece into the back panel of the wing. I wasn't able to fit my dolly inside, so I modified a railroad spike. Scrap pieces of metal are invaluable when it comes to doing stuff like this. With the wing done, it's time to start working on the legs. I cut down this piece of plywood to act as a template for the jig. I then cut a bunch of three inch wide strips of oak and used my miter saw to cut the ends at an angle. I took my time and tried to sneak up on the fitment of each piece.
So the general idea here was to have these three layers of oak and alternate which one of these was the long piece, basically. Um, so when it comes together in the corners, you basically are creating fingers or lap joints, whatever you want to call them. And in theory, it sounded like a good idea. Where I ran into problems was just the execution of it. Um, I think the jig probably could have been a little better and I was probably kind of rushing and didn't really put enough thought into it. So I think this is a good idea. I think this is still gonna work great and end up being really strong, but it just could have been executed a little better. So if you wanna try something like this yourself, just maybe put a little more thought into it, come up with a better jig, uh, definitely put more thought into how you're gonna trim the pieces. That's where I ran into some issues, just getting everything the exact length that I needed it to be. And if you do end up coming up with something, I'd love to hear about it. Either leave a comment down below or tag me on Instagram with some pictures. I used my track saw to trim off the excess and chamfered all of the edges with a router. I then used a chisel to square up the inside corners. I love using this little hand plane to chamfer edges. It's one of my favorite hand tools. Now to drill what felt like a thousand holes. I was worried about burning up the Forstner bit, so I only used that to start the hole. Then I swapped over to a paddle bit to quickly remove the rest of the material. Next I drilled the rest of the way through with the Forstner bit. I finished off each hole with a 45 degree chamfer before sanding. I decided to use India ink to dye the legs black. I love the way you still see the grain, but it gives a real industrial look. I find that using a scuff pad while the India ink is still wet really helps even it out. I sealed them with a few coats of polycrylic for a gloss finish, lightly sanding between each coat. While I love the results, polishing aluminum is probably my least favorite thing to do. If you think sanding sucks, give this a try. It really helps put things into perspective. I don't think I'll ever complain about sanding again. I used this opportunity to start 3D printing some of the many brackets I'll need for this project. I've seen people use 3D printing in furniture building before and always wanted to give it a try. I chose orange because it seems to go with the aviation theme and I knew it would bother people. This is really messy work. I usually start out using 600 grit, but only had 400, so I had to settle for that. I start buffing with rubbing compound to remove the heavy scratches before switching over to an aluminum polish. It's important to use a powerful buffer that can really turn some high RPMs if you want a really shiny surface. For now, I'm just doing the bottom. I'll do the rest once everything is assembled. I used CA glue and lag bolts to secure the 3D printed pieces to the legs. Once I had them in place, I transferred the bolt hole locations over to the bottom of the wing and drilled them out. It was a little bit of a pain to get everything bolted together and I needed to use a magnet to hold the nut and washer on the inside. I needed a way to stabilize the legs and prevent them from racking. This sounded like a great place for these turnbuckles. They're made out of a threaded aluminum rod, clevises, and a couple lock nuts. I get them from Speedway Motors. They're intended for use on race cars, but really carry that aviation theme over. I used more 3D printed parts to attach everything together. I designed everything in Fusion 360 and made it on my Anycubic Mega S. My tolerances might have been a little tight here, but I ended up getting everything together with only a little bit of persuasion. These turnbuckles have right-handed threads on one end and left-handed on the other, so all you have to do is twist the tube to adjust the length. Alright, now that the body of the desk is done, I need to come up with some sort of keyboard tray. And I designed this mechanism that when the tray is pushed forward and in, it will tuck up against the bottom of the wing, and then as you pull it out, 
it will flatten out and uh, allow you to use it properly. I started 3D printing some more parts for it. I've got these bottom brackets, which the tray itself is gonna sit between here. Um, and I've been printing these top brackets and they've really been kicking my butt. I'm using PETG. It's just not a material that I'm really familiar with. Uh, I know I'm doing some stuff wrong. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but right now I just don't have the time to troubleshoot all of that. So you can see how bad this one was. I've made some adjustments to my model and got it quite a bit better, but it's still not perfectly flat. Just on these ends here, it curled up a little bit on my print bed. So my idea is I'm going to come through on the bandsaw and cut the back of this off. And then I'm going to try to graph it to this piece of aluminum. So let's give that a shot and see if that fixes my problems. While the epoxy is curing, I can lay out the spot for the keyboard and start cutting the pocket. There's much better ways to do this. My CNC router really would have been perfect, but I wanted to try something different and decided to do it with a palm router. I quickly laid out this jig to act as a border for the bearing of the bit to ride on. Once the outside was cut, I used a long piece of MDF to make this temporary base that would allow the router to remain supported while over the large pocket. I made a couple passes to get to the depth that I wanted, and again, finished it up with India ink and polycrylic. Grafting the aluminum and 3D printed brackets worked great, so I moved forward with assembly. You'll notice some other aluminum brackets here. While I could have cut these out on the bandsaw, I decided to try my CNC router. This was my first time cutting aluminum on the Shapoko. For anyone wondering, I was cutting at 60 inches per minute with a cut depth of 15 thousandths of an inch. I used a quarter inch O-flute bit. It took about an hour to cut all four brackets. I'll definitely be cutting more aluminum in the future. I think these simple brackets were a great place to start. The drawer will need a little adjusting and should get smoother with use. This was a great proof of concept and I'll definitely be using this in more projects. I installed some adjustable leveling feet and then spent the next couple days polishing the rest of the wing. Thank you all for following along with this build and supporting me. You guys really inspire me. Big shout out to everyone who helps me over on Patreon. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And I'll see everybody over on this next project.